OTS will also never ask you for your password. So yes, we will never, you, ever, ever ask you for your password. Please don't give it. We'll never ask you for your full SOCH. Anything we may ask you for, well, I believe it's the last four digits. I, I, it's been so long since I've needed help changing it. But they will never, ever ask you for your password. Now, here's something I learned the wrong way. Um, I, as my, as my security questions, I misspelled one of the words. Uh, a, the city of my birth, and uh, it took quite a, a hunt to figure out what the um, the real answer was. When finally OTS was able to reveal what I had put there, it was a misspelling that I had made. So it was user error. I did it, and they were able to help me out of that situation. But just just know that when you're um, <laughs> when you're creating those uh, backup questions, pay real close attention to how you how you type them in, and you'll save yourself a lot of aggravation. Right. One of the other good things to do is not only when you go to my PW um, to uh, put your security questions in for your account, your net ID. Um, the other thing to do is, is to set up your cell. If you have a cell phone, set up a cell phone number in there. So when you don't remember your security questions, you can send a uh, five digit pin to your cell phone or to a off-campus email address, so a secondary email address. So like if you have a Gmail account plus your U-Bot, you could put your Gmail account in there or your cell phone number, and then we can send a five-digit PIN there so you can get back in to access your email and things like that while we're, when we're closed. So like if, if it's after 8.30 in the evening or a Saturday or Sunday and you really need to get into email, um, that would be another way that you could get into your account when it's locked or um, if you need to change your password. There's a question, where do we set the cell phone confirmation option? Uh, is that on the, I'm sure that's on the OTS page. Um, if not, the OTS call center can definitely help you that. Uh, I set mine up in 2005 and I, I'm sorry, I apologize. I just don't remember how I did it. Um, but if you can't find it on ubalt.edu slash OTS, please call the call center. They can help you through it. Also, uh, based off of current security practices right now, they actually strongly suggest that for your security questions, respectfully, it shouldn't be like your mother's maiden name or your maiden name, because those are things that they can potentially find online. But what they can't find online is your childhood friend, your favorite color, your dog's name, you know, things like that. So always be cautious about what you do for your uh, security questions. Again, uh, unfortunately, the bad guys have nothing but time on their hands. If they spend a little bit more productively, it'd be better. But we do everything we can to try to protect your account. Unfortunately, I mean, we usually have about one student account per week that gets compromised. So if it gets compromised, we have to shut it down hard and we try our best to recover it the best we can for you. Uh, a lot of times it may have uh, some data in there that's been compromised. So if you also, if you feel that someone has your password, please change your account right away. It, it takes seconds to change. Does anybody, Chris, are there questions? I mean, I have great advice about changing your email and your passwords. If you feel immediately that it's been compromised in any way, like if you lose your cell phone or, you know, you're, you give your, leave your computer somewhere or log in from a public place. I think that's wonderful, wonderful information. You've Thank answered, you for sharing that. You've answered most of the questions I had. You've told us how to contact you. Um, everybody's working basically off site at this point. So uh, the email addresses and, um, the call your mama line or the first versions of that um, getting attention that you need. And um, definitely if you need equipment, you should seek that out. Do either of you, any of you have uh, an estimate for how many computers you loaned out in the spring term? Um, we checked out 118 um, laptops in the spring. Um, we're looking to probably do about the same we're starting to take um, requests for fall accommodations um, starting the first week in August. Um, right now, we're, fi we're finalizing summer, anyone taking summer classes, 
closing that out. We'll get them all back by the 10th and then we'll be ready to sign them out by the third week in August before classes start. And mm -hmm. uh, you need to be enrolled to access that service. Is that correct? Right. right. You need to be enrolled in at least one class. Okay. And the laptop will go out for the semester for you. Um, if you, um, so if you're registered in the fall and you have your laptop, um, everything will be set up by the third week in August for you. And part of the checkout up. process does emphasize social distancing. You are required to wear a mask. Um, we haven't gotten formal approval which building it will happen. It'll likely come out of the business center, but we haven't gotten that formal approval yet. Uh, but we purposely are doing it where we're trying to space people out um, so that we can exercise social distancing. And if you need a camera so that you can participate in your um, synchronous classes over Zoom, I strongly urge you to, to request one. Um, not everyone has their camera on here today, but uh, if that's because you don't have a camera, please request one. They're really helpful for creating that sense of community in the classroom. Not everyone likes to be on camera. I'm one of those people for sure, but, um, but it really makes it much much more like the in-person experience that we really treasure at UB. And uh, so I hope that you'll, you'll feel free to do that and, and take whatever um, assistance that our, OT, our fabulous OTS team is offering to, um, to you this semester.